Hello everyone, let's uh, set up a prismatic joint in Femap. This uh, geometry was created in SolidWorks, we save it as a parasolid and then we can import it into Femap. We're gonna go to File, Import Geometry and Prismatic, OK. Uh, name it whatever you want, here you have the chance to scale it if you want. OK, and here's my geometry. Now, what uh, is a plan ahead? What do we need to allow and not allow in this joint? Prismatic joint means that we're going to allow this translational motion. This along the, let's see what axis it, did it set it up as, along the Z axis looks like. Right? We want it to allow to go in and out this way. We do not allow any other translation, just along the Z and also no rotation is allowed doesn't matter in what direction no rotation okay that's what we're gonna have to set up first up let's do our material name it whatever you want material one two three well not one two m one two three there you go I call this i don't know 60 e9 point three three this one make it i don't know 250 Okay, now we're going to be dealing with um, solids here, so I'm going to property, go to property and create solids as uh, element, pick the material, element type, uh, solid right here, okay, and then, then that's it, okay, done. Now let's uh, go ahead and mesh this. Uh, Mesh, geometry, mesh. Let's see that first. Size on solid. This one, this one. Okay. Uh, tetrahedral mesh is fine. Let it do its thing. Then go back. Geometry and actually mesh it on both. Okay. Tetrahedral mesh. I'm gonna unclick the mid side, mid side nodes. Like this, we are working with the um, linear shape functions. Remember uh, the elements only have uh, nodes at the end and the beginning, i and j. If you click it, then we're going to have a mid-side node as well, where not just i and j, we also have a k at the middle. I, and that would be using the more accurate or more precise uh, shape functions like the quadratic one. Okay, For me, linear is just fine. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, that's it. And there's my mesh. Quick look. Yeah, looks good enough for us. We don't need it to be any more precise than that. Even though it looks quite coarse down here, but it's fine. Good enough for this example. Let's go. Okay, so we meshed it. Good. Now it's time for us to set up our rigid body elements. Go to model element type rigid okay and I'm gonna color it something else than white because let's say orange and node at the center of all the dependent nodes that we're gonna pick and all of these checked are fine for me this is just means that which uh, translations do we want the dependent nodes to copy from the independent or master node okay so nodes Let's pick it. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the mesh. Here's the geometry. I'm gonna hide one of the geometries. Let's start with this one. Yeah, there you go. Hide the nodes as well. Good. So we can actually see what we're doing. And pick it from on a surface. So I wanted this surface, this surface, this one, and this one. Highlight. Those are all the nodes that I'll be working with. Okay. And then, then, then that's it. Click OK. Now the second set of RBs, two sets of RB spiders we have to set up. One on each material and then both converging in the same location to their own uh, masters, right? So now let's do the second. This one, let's turn this off and then turn this on. And that is, this is where a connection is, so again on a surface I need this one this one 
that one and that one. Highlight, cool. I like it. Okay, and give it a different color, maybe blue. Okay, and okay. Cancel, and now let's check. Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna turn geometry off. This one on. And these are all solid elements, right? And now, if we turn them off, the solids, we can see all the RBEs, or even here, element by type, turn off the solids, there you go. So, good. Let's see if our two nodes are not in the same location. So, click list, go to model, model node. Let's do a box select. Okay, and by ID, cool. And compare their uh, coordinates. And looks like x1, x2, x3, which is xyz. Uh, it's exactly the same, perfect. They are coincident. We don't need to move one node to the other one. Check out the spherical joint video if you want to see how, uh, if your nodes are in different locations. But for us here, it's all good. We don't need to move them. Now we need to set up a spring element between our two masters. So make sure you do this list uh, call out that we just did because you're gonna, it's going to be useful to have these identities handy. So let's go back to model property. I'm going to call it a spring. We're gonna use the spring damper, generalized uh, uh, element, C bush. Yep. And okay, now we need to set up the correct motions that we wanna achieve. Remember we, what we said? We want only motion along the Z axis. This is where we make that happen. So all the degrees of freedom that we don't want, we're gonna uh, add a very high stiffness rate. Uh, coefficient over here and but the one that I do want to allow like translation in the Z that would be X Y and Z number three over here I'm gonna leave a zero so that means that's gonna have an easy time happening versus all of these which are gonna be have a hard time happening right so that should do it click OK cancel and now we need to set up this spring element and connect our two uh, masters. Okay, so model element, pick the spring that we just defined. And right now, see, it would be very hard to pick it from here because they are on top of each other. So this is why we needed these uh, data over here. So we can simply just type it in 15, uh, 1851 and 1852 click OK, cancel, and if you zoom in and turn off the rigid body elements, you can see the symbol for the spring damper element that it was created, so you can convince yourself that it is there. Now, we are done, we are ready, so as a double check, it's good to uh, do a normal modes analysis on your uh, geometry to convince yourself that you know you were successful setting up what you wanted so for that I'm gonna turn the geometry back on and constrain in uh, one face uh, on surface it got to be C boundary condition I'm gonna constrain this side call it a wall fixed okay cancel and there you go and now when we have our uh, analysis, we'll go to call it whatever, pick this one, normal modes, eigenvalue, okay, and analyze. So now we're gonna check for the first 10 natural frequencies of this setup. And if we're gonna see any frequency that is very, very, very slow near zero value, that is basically a free motion that is still happening it's not constrained so it's done yeah it's done okay good so let's go to our results 
So let's take a look. What do we have? Here's our first 10 frequencies that it found, uh, and it we have some kind of motion or uh, resonance on, right? So if you take a look at the very first one, it's 0 0.0013 near zero, right? And if you compare it to the next one, 413, significantly larger. So this near zero frequency shows that we have something that is freely wiggling around, not constrained. You can right click on it and animate it and there you go. We can see it move. Now let's uh, turn on the turn off the geometry. You can even see the <laughs> the two spiders wiggling around, right? And if I turn the mesh back on where it on where it, oh, my solid elements are not on. There you go. Now you can visualize what is that free body uh, motion that is occurring that uh, is it the one that you wanted or maybe you accidentally picked uh, degree of freedom 2 instead of 3 and then you have a different kind of motion happening. This is a good validation. And see if we would want to pick uh, where is my the next frequency and animate that. That is not a simple motion, see? That is, th this is not, uh, it's impossible for it to move like this. So this is a, uh, like a resonance, a normal mode. It's first normal mode of this uh, structure. But this one, there's animate, there you go. You can tell that this one is not a normal mode. This is just a near zero frequency that's showing something is loose and is wiggling around unconstrained. All right, that should do it. Thanks for watching.